Okay, if you have an Android smartphone, Google knows a lot about you. It tracks your real-time location even when it is turned off, your likes and dislikes based on your YouTube watch history, and of course, the apps you use and for how long. I'm still trying to cut down on my Instagram usage, but the point here is Google has a lot of information on you and the least you can do is not give away your browsing habits with Google Chrome. And the good part here is most Chrome alternatives like Microsoft Edge, Brave, Vivaldi, and even Samsung Internet are based on the same structure of Chrome, that is Chromium. So you get the speed, performance, cross-platform sync of Chromium with added benefits like built-in ad blocker, tracking prevention, biometric lock, etc. But with so many alternatives out there, the question needs to be asked, which is the best Google Chrome alternatives for Android? Well, this is Vadeek from TechVisor.com and let me take you through this. First up, we have Samsung Internet and I never thought I would recommend a Samsung software because, you know, sluggish UI. But one UI has done good things and the browser seems good. Before you begin, performance and speed is not big of a deal amongst these web browsers and I'll explain it to you later in this video. So Samsung Internet is based on Chromium, Chromium 71 to be precise, which is not that latest. But my favorite thing about the Samsung Internet is you can password protect your incognito mode. And the outstanding part is, it works with your biometrics as well. We have had fingerprint sensors on smartphones since 2013, but rarely I've seen browsers using them. Anyways, with Android 10's biometric API, Samsung Internet can use fingerprint, face unlock, retina scanning data to unlock your incognito mode as well as saved passwords. Let me show you. With a normal browser, you just tap on the saved password and it autofills. Whereas with Samsung Internet, it verifies your fingerprint. This additional layer of security prevents people from logging into your Facebook if they get your phone. Having said that, I would still recommend using dedicated password managers like LastPass, 1Password, etc. Samsung Internet checks most of the boxes of being the ideal browser, but here is where it fails. The sync option. Samsung doesn't have a desktop variant of the browser, so you would have to rely on Firefox or Chrome. On one hand, the Firefox sync works well. You sign in with your Firefox account and boom, it's done. But for Chrome, you have to use the Samsung internet extension and it can only sync bookmarks, which is again, quite a process. So who should use this? Well, if you have a Samsung device, obviously. And if you aren't bothered about the cross-platform sync too much, Samsung internet makes sense. Edge Chromium for mobile is already out and I would say it's still not there yet, but I've already switched over to Edge and I have my own reasons. First of all, switching from Google Chrome to Edge is simple. It imports your password, form data, bookmarks, everything, and it is synced to the mobile app as well. Nice, that's seamless. However, I would like to point out tracking prevention, history and open tab sync hasn't come yet on the Android version, due somewhere in February. I'll update that in the description as soon as we get it. Talking about the features, Edge offers continue on PC, which allows you to continue the same article on your desktop. Again, it is not one tap, but it works. You can do the same on other Chromium browsers by enabling the clipboard sync flag. The thing that impressed me the most is Microsoft's activity page. Similar to Google's My Activity page, Microsoft also has an activity page wherein you can view all your browser history and data collection. You can choose to delete all the data, which is good. However, I didn't find a periodic deletion option like the one Google introduced recently. You could maybe add that Microsoft. Thank you. Tor browser, as you know, is famous for the Tor network. In case you don't know, every time you make a query via the Tor browser, it bounces your connection through three different Tor clients until it reaches the server. So it helps protect your anonymity on the web. One of the most popular reasons why people use Tor is dark web. Of course, we won't go deep into the deep web or the dark web, but in general, there are certain websites which cannot be accessed through your regular data browser. For example, ProPublica, which is a popular American NGO which supports investigative journalism. Next 
up is Brave, which is essentially Chrome but with added security and privacy upgrades. I have used Brave for a year or so until recently I switched over to Edge Chromium. But here's what's great about Brave. The privacy and security features Brave offers have no comparison. In addition to ad blocking and tracking prevention, it even has fingerprinting protection, which I don't see anyone doing in this list. In case you didn't know about fingerprinting, websites are notorious in uniquely identifying you even when tracker prevention is on. It is done by injecting invisible HTML code through canvas fingerprinting or storing cookies. Then the browsing data is sold to third party. Brave does a good job in protecting you against all of these. One of my favorite features in Brave is different search engines. Like you can have Google search engine in normal mode. And when you switch to incognito, you can jump to DuckDuckGo. So all of this is good, but here's what I noticed with Brave. It has recently started sending push notifications which are ads. You can turn that off in settings, but it comes enabled by default as part of Brave Rewards. Why? Don't, don't do that Brave. It's easy to get carried away, but don't be the next UC browser. I want everyone to try Brave Browser. It has the best privacy features, good ad model, and the only browser in this list to offer separate DuckDuckGo search engine in incognito mode. And by the way, a quick shout out to Kiwi Browser. It does something that no other browser on Android does. It supports desktop Chrome extensions. So you can go ahead and install all your ad block and tracking prevention extensions. Vivaldi launched its Android web browser back in September 2019 and it has been in beta since then. But why Vivaldi? Well, consider Vivaldi as MIUI or ColorOS on top of Android. It's a highly skinned version of Chromium with lots of customizations but essentially the same web engine. Apart from all the things that you get, the interesting part with Vivaldi is end-to-end -end encryptions. While all the browsers in this list do provide encryption of some sorts, it's not end-to-end. -end. The cloud server can still potentially read your data, whereas in case of Vivaldi, you provide a password to encrypt your data so the cloud server cannot read it. And my favorite part is the open tab synchronization. You can view the tabs that you have opened on your Android directly onto your desktop. Just click on the cloud icon and you get your open tabs from the Android. You can do the same on your phone as well. Just go to the cloud tab and you can see the tabs you have opened on your desktop. The only major thing missing in Vivaldi is ad blocking and tracking prevention. You don't get it natively. Who is this for? Well, if you like tinkering with your browser, Vivaldi would be a good option. The desktop version lets you customize font, tab design, DNS settings, hotkeys, etc, etc. And the encrypted sync with the web browser is a nice addition. Firefox uses a different web engine. And remember I told you performance and battery management doesn't matter in all those web browser? Well, let me show you why. We benchmarked opening times of five different websites on each of these browsers. These websites ranged from being simple to heavy UI, 3D, WebGL, etc. And as you can see, there is no clear winner or a pattern because most of them have the same web engine, Blink and V8. So the bigger picture here is web browser war is between Blink and Gecko. Since most of the web browsers are moving towards Chromium, the developers tend to test their websites only on Chromium's web engine Blink, which explains everything. If you're using Firefox on the desktop, stick to it on Android as well. Everything works like the Google Chrome ecosystem. But what I want you to try is Firefox Focus. It's not available in India and you have to download it from GitHub. Firefox Focus only opens in incognito and the only problem you'll face is you get only one tab to use. If you can get around that, things are pretty private. If you want to stick to Chrome, do that, but for incognito purposes, you can use Firefox Focus dedicatedly. It makes more sense than using incognito in Google Chrome. And with that, there goes the list. And we would definitely revisit browsers once Edge Mobile and Desktop gets the sync. But until then, this is Pradeek signing off. See you soon.